What's up with you? I'm good. How's it going? Good. And you? I'm blessed, man. Can't complain. Happy to be here. Yeah. Introduce yourself as people know who you are. Uh, so I'm Marvin, the Bank Mitchell. I help people with financial literacy, how to create their own bank and not rely on the banks, and how to use high ca- cash value life insurance to just build generational wealth and make passive income so that you can retire and live the life of your dreams. You also, you forgot to mention that you are Arthur as well. I'm an Arthur. I own a financial firm um, in Missouri. Um, got about um, 14 um, employees, four different advisors. I wrote about four books. Uh, retire early, become your own bank, protecting your retirement nest egg, and also um, the Wall Street trap. So, a lot of different uh, books that are out there. And uh, my job just to go out, educate the people, um, teach the people, um, so that we we can gain that knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like when it comes to retirement, the average American typically depends on like their employer with the four hundred one k or the pensions. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other solutions, like as far as like retiring early, as you say? Yeah. You say one of your titles of your book. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really so. The problem is, it's just only relying on the four hundred one k's, which is what most people do. Is most people don't understand that they actually putting themselves into a financial trap. Think about it. You invest in the four hundred one k, you can't even touch that money until you're fifty nine and a half. Um, what if you want to start a business? What if you want to create another job? What if you want to do something else? You can't even do it because your money is stuck without extra penalties and stuff. So, you know, only I teach people to only invest up into the matching their 401ks. Outside of that, you can do stocks, bonds, but also something that you could do is um, high cash value life insurance, which is what I teach people. So there's essentially three different type, types of people when it comes to money, and you got to decide which one you want to be. So you got a debtor, you got a saver, and then you got a wealth creator. The debtor, um, they just consume and spend everything, and they go into debt, and they spend their life attempting to get out of debt. Then when they close, they go into debt again. Their entire goal is just to get to zero. They they living in a rat race is what, what it's called. So they're just trying to get their feet above water, and they say, if only I can get to zero and be debt-free, I'll be good. If somebody can pay off my debt, I'll be good. problem with that is when you get debt-free, you basically you at zero. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? There are homeless people on the street that are at zero, but that doesn't mean they're in a better financial position than you. So that's really what some people like Dave Ramsey teach and stuff like that. But I, I really don't teach you to just be debt free. I teach you to be a wealth creator. The second type of person is the saver. What the saver does is they, they say, well, I'm not going to get into debt. So I'm going to save, 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 save. And then I'm going to go, then I'm going to pay cash. Then I'm going to save, save, save. Then I'm going to pay cash. And I'm going to keep doing that over and over. The problem with that is you save every time you pay cash you stop in the forward momentum of your money and now you got to rebuild it again and then you stop in the forward momentum again you're not continuously compounding your money so problem with that too is that a saver lives a scarcity mindset they think that if i just live if i could just live in a position right now and starve myself so later i can live like i want to live later congratulations you just spent 10 years depriving yourself so that you can save and you still ain't get ahead so what I teach people to do is to be a wealth creator. That means that you can do both. It doesn't have to be either or, it can be both and, which means you can continue to allow your money to build, compound it, and you can leverage it in a way that when it's time to spend, you can borrow against your own money so that now you got your money working for you in two different places. And when you borrow, you buy income producing assets such as real estate, such as um, such as stocks, such as um, Airbnb, such as Turo. So now, the, the whole objective is, is how can you get your money to work three, four, five times at the same time? You know what I mean? That's really what we want to do. And here's the, here's the deal. Like, you can do it. It's just a simple formula for individuals to follow to be able to do that. But most people don't know it, so they never do it. And they continue to be, to make poor decisions because they haven't been taught. They've been taught by the schools and educational system, poor financial management. And that's what people do. You just, um touched on a lot in just that yeah. whole spiel you just did. Saving and investing. Mm-hmm. You know, most people, like you said, they want to have a comfortable life where you spend their whole life depriving themselves saving just so they have the comfortability of having some money stashed for yeah. emergency. Versus, like you said, where you can have that money that you save and kind of put a little bit here and then let it gradually grow. Like invest it basically, like, yeah. like you said, for a stock or maybe to a, a real estate investment. Yeah. It's where the money works for you. 
Well, let me tell you the difference on with that thinking. So again, when I had that savers mentality, I did. I drove a, a old Ford Taurus for a few years. I drove. I lived in a small house because my whole thing was to save, 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 eating ramen noodles, not trying to spend extra money and all this other stuff, living frugal, quote unquote. But what that was actually doing, having that mindset, was actually putting me into a scarcity poverty mindset without me even realizing it. Because think about what you're saying when you think that you can't spend nothing, you got to save everything. You're thinking that I can't afford it. You're thinking that uh, money doesn't come easily, frequently, and abundantly. You're thinking that opportunities are not all around you. Therefore, your subconscious allows that to keep coming back to you where you constantly feel like there's not enough. There's not enough. And let me tell you this. A lot of people think that when they save, 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 save like that, one day when they have a lot of money, they're going to finally be able to be financially free and enjoy their life. I'm a financial advisor. I got clients that got $3 million, $5 million saved up. And guess what? Because they grew up with that mindset that, that they don't have enough, they got to be frugal. You don't lose that mindset just because you have money. They still are afraid to enjoy their life. They still call me for permission to spend $15,000 out of their $5 million account because they think they're going to run out of money. So instead of you having that mindset stick with you, you got to have an abundant mindset. An abundant mindset means an investor's mindset. So when I say abundant mindset, let me give you an example. I was in my four toys, as I mentioned, living in the same house. And then I said, you know what? I'm tired of living like that. I need to start enjoying my life. So what I did was I went out and I got me um, a Range Rover. It was a custom Range Rover, the scariest decision I ever made. It cost me 160 grand. And I was only making about 100 grand a year, but it cost me 160 grand. And let me tell you this, it got peanut butter seats. It's outside. I don't know if you saw it when you came out. Peanut butter seats in the interior, reclines in the back. You know, we got cooler massage seats like everything this thing is like fully equipped tvs all of it and when i got it i still kept my old car because i was like i ain't gonna really drive this because to me it was like a luxury to have it so problem is is that i got it and i kept my old car that battery in that old car died three times because i never used it because what i what happened is i'm driving around in that luxury and i'm it's feeling good i'm i'm, I'm feeling myself now i'm feeling like okay i deserve this and then it became like normal to be driving around in it. But guess what that did? It taught me, that's the year so that I was driving around that Range Rover and I saw that there was more out there. That's the year that I went from 100K to being a millionaire. Because I trained my mindset to think abundance instead of thinking scarcity. A lot of times you think you're saving by being cheap with yourself, but actually what you're doing is you're costing yourself money because you because you being stuck in a mindset of poverty. And you being poor. Poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. Right. That's exactly what happens when you make poor decisions. Basically, like you're saying you're scared to take a risk too, because you're, you're scared to take a risk, man. You can't be you can't be afraid to take a risk, man. Let me tell you um, tell you a real quick story in the Bible, man. It's, it's the story of the talents in the Bible. There's a master that came and he gave three people. He gave three people what's called a talent according to their ability. That's basically money. One talent was almost worth a million dollars. So I want you to imagine he gave one person one talent. He gave another person two. And he gave another person five talents, right? So that's like seven million, I mean, eight million dollars he gave in all. So he gave these talents to these three people. One person, the scarcity mindset person, was so afraid that he was going to lose it that he just buried it in the ground and waited for the master to come back. The other two, the one that had two, flipped it to four. The one that had five, flipped it to ten. So when the master came back, he said, "What you? let me see what you did with the money. The one that had one, he said, I was afraid to lose it because I know that you are a person that reap in places that you do not sow. I didn't want to lose your money. Therefore, I buried it. So when you come back, you can't say I lost it. I didn't want to take a risk with you. I kept it safe. The other two said they invested and they doubled their money. You know what he did? Well, he took the one, he took the talent from the one person and he gave it to the person with 10. And he even called the person with one wicked. He said, you'll be cast aside or there'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. Eventually, he just said it was basically a sin for you not to for you not to reproduce this money, for you to try to keep it safe and protect it and not live abundantly. Uh, essentially, what he said, essentially what he said was, look, I'm a God of multiplication. He said that I'm somebody who said I said he said, multiply, be fruitful, you know, reproduce after your own kind. That's not just for kids. That's for money, too. Bible talks about money more than any other subject except heaven and hell. So he's talking about reproducing after your own kind. You got to make money babies. You got to have that money making money for you over and over. You got to learn how to make 
money off of that same dollar three different times instead of just one time. And the problem is, is that most people, they play, they don't understand the game. So the first time you played tic-tac-toe, who won? Was it you or the person that showed it to you? <laughs> the same person that showed it to you. The reason why they won is because they understood the game. You was going to keep losing until you understood the strategy and understand how to play the game. Now, once you understand the game, you could be on the same playing field. So what I teach people is what you thought to be true about money turned out not to be true. When would you want to know about it? And that's how, and that's how what we do is we built a, a multi-million dollar firm that's in three different states. We travel around the states because we teach people these principles that schools don't teach you, most financial advisors don't teach you, and definitely the educational system don't teach you. Especially just like... You know, black and brown people, we mm -hmm. definitely, you know, suffer the, the lack of knowledge. They say, like you just said, something about like the circulation of the dollar. They said in, yep. in the black community, I think like the average circulation of a dollar is probably like six hours compared to like other communities where it's like 30 days or 28 days or so and so. Yeah. Um, you talk about, um, you talk about black people and black and brown people. So you got to understand that the true wealth principles even that that's taught in the financial industry is not the real wealth principles that make people really really rich there are some secrets that are out there on how to generate wealth and how to be financially free that some people know about but a lot of times you don't know about it why you got to understand so let's go back um history a little bit there was a time period where black people Let's say I'm a black person, I came, I wanted to get a mortgage, and I would get denied being a mortgage because I was being black. They wouldn't even give me financing at the bank. You know what I mean? So again, to understand, here's a principle. They didn't even want you to read not that long ago. They didn't even want you to join together in groups not that long ago. You would be divided. They didn't even want you to vote not that long ago. So you think that they really want to reveal all of the wealth building strategies and the principles that they know that's going to help to take you and your family to the next level and build generational wealth. Not at all, not at all. Especially like with, um, what's that, um, Black Wall Street. Yeah. It yeah, yeah. came once they started, like you said, once the people in that city started to you know, accumulate funds and started to build up their community, they came and just destroyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible, bro. It's, it's like... And so we can say day, 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 because, you know, we do have an opposition against us. But at the same time, overall, once you know this, now it's on you. Say my people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. Yes. We revealing some of these things to you. So once you know it, you know it. So you can't go out and say, well, nobody ever told me this. You know this stuff now. Now it's up to you to go out and say, I'm about to make a difference. I want my great, great grandkids to say because of the decisions that I made, it changed the trajectory of my entire family. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's the thing, you all, you got to understand that you were meant for more. You were meant to be abundant. You were meant to have more. You, were, you weren't meant to be broke, busted, and disgusted. You were meant to be powerful. The head and not the tail. A lender and not a borrower. Above and not beneath. So you got to claim your inheritance. You got to take back what was stolen from you years ago. And in order to do that, you got to be in power. You got to notice financial freedom because everything runs on economics. Everything runs on economics. Once you know, you know. And it's your job to go out and empower the community. But the, one of the reasons why people don't go out and do this, why they're such afraid to take risk, it's not because they're afraid of risk. You know why? They're afraid of what somebody else is going to say about their decisions. Mm -hmm. Because everybody, you know, uncle, uncle, cousin, my, cousin, my cousin Joe ain't doing it that way. You know, um, you know, we Julie ain't doing it that way. All of this. Like, here's the, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you this, this one thing that's going to change your life. You are a giraffe, so you were meant to be a giraffe, which means that your head hangs high above the trees, which means you can see above the trees. You can see your vision clearly. Like, you got a dream. You've had that dream. Now, granted, life could have knocked that dream down and kind of broke it down to where you don't feel as confident, but you had a dream. You're the giraffe. So what happens is you're looking above the trees and you can see clearly. But then you start to doubt yourself. And you used to say, well, before I do this, let me just go ask, you know, um, you know Ray Ray what he think about it. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is you reach your neck down and you get permission from a turtle. You say, hey, what should I do? You bend your neck down. What should I do? Ray Ray's like, nah, man, because he love you. Ray Ray don't want nothing. He don't want nothing to happen to you. So he, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. that. That don't make sense. That's a scam. That's a scam. Problem is that turtle 
although they like you and they, and they love you, they can only see two feet in front of them. They can't see what you can see because you got the vision. They don't have the vision. And here's something else. The thing about the giraffe, all of their oxygen flows through their neck. So when they bend their head down and they talk to that turtle for, long, for too long, guess what? The oxygen cut it off and they actually suffocate and die. And that's what's happening to too many people. Every time they get a vision, every time they get a goal, every time they get driven and they get around negative people, those negative people, even though they don't mean harm to them, they suck out their oxygen and they kill their dream. They destroy their dream. So you end up being in the same exact place than you was. You end up, you end up getting negativity and you let that negativity beat you over the positivity that exists. It's a mindset thing most definitely for sure. I would say it's, that. It's all mindset, mindset, bro. Mindset, habits, everything. Like you said, you don't want to step out of the comfort zone. Even though you know, like, hey, I can do this and it can put me in a better yep. position. But, hey, such and such can't do this. They still, you know, you basically, <clears throat> you fit the mold. And, you know, it's, it, it's all in the way you think, man. To go deeper, um, the Bible says, um, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It says, speak those things that are not as though they are. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. If you look up the definition of future, the definition of future says something that happens after it's written down. The time between something actually happening after the time that it's written down or spoken. That's actually the definition of a future. If you want to create a future, you got to think it, you got to speak it, look it up. I challenge you all to look up the definition of future. It's power. When I learned the definition of future, it changed my life. Now, here's the thing. You can... Um, you know, in the, in, the, in the Bible, and I'm talking Bible, like I'm not a extremely religious person, but you can learn a lot by reading the Bible. So it was Caleb, uh, it was Joshua, and it was 12 other spies. This is when they was caught the, the stalk out the, the land of Canaan. That was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. So all the other 10 spies, they came back with a negative report. They said, man, I see the, the land is flowing in milk and honey, but I also see big giants. I also see people standing in our way. If we go over there, we're going to get crushed. We caterpillars in their eyes. Like, we're going to get crushed. They said they saw themselves as, as caterpillars, and so they were. Why? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The only two people that came back with a good report is Caleb and Joshua. Joshua is a person who came back and said, I see the vision. We already won the battle. All we got to do is walk through it. I'm not worried about no giants because we already won. It's written down. We're going to walk through and we're going to claim and we're going to take what is ours. So what happened? They actually came and they took over the, uh, over the land. That's actually why I named my son Joshua after that passage in the Bible, man, because God told me a long time ago that I was going to be like a Moses. I was going to take my family out of bondage. I was going to take my family to another level, but my son's going to be like a Joshua. He's going to actually be able to take over the land and take us to a whole other dimension. Mm. That's deep. That's yeah. Deep. <clears throat> and I'm sure that's like you said, you have been prepping your children up until the point where you say well, they go off and on their own. Absolutely. One thing I want to um, speak on, you spoke earlier about, um, you know, real estate and mm -hmm. Airbnbs. It's like, I've had like a debate, I think I probably read it in um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. They say, uh, they say a person goes out and buy a house. Mm-hmm. It's debated whether it's a liability or an asset. For my yeah. own personal thing, I would say it's a liability with the mortgage. You got to pay mortgage. It become an asset when you when it makes money for like for like Airbnbs and things like that. Yeah. Um, could you kind of break that down? Yeah, yeah, you got it, man. It's like I it, I hate when people just go out and just say your home is always an asset. I mean, it 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 costs money. To, to have a home, man. Keeping the line maintained, keeping the um, you know the grass and, and and the utilities, and it costs furniture. Now you got to pay for the I mean electricity. It's it's an expense, right? If your home is just something that you live in and you don't care that it's an expense, that's good. Good. Just know that it's a liability. It's okay. You're in a liability. But if you but that home actually builds up something that's called equity, right? Equity doesn't earn any money. Equity is just there. Think about it. The home value is going to appreciate whether or not you have more money into it or not. If you have a dollar in it and the home value appreci appreciated by 5%, 300000 turned to three hundred fifteen. If you have $300,000 in that home appreciated by 5%, your 300000 turned to three fifteen. It's still three fifteen. So what I, I teach people is if you don't plan to live in that house forever, you need to you don't want to have it full with equity doing nothing. It becomes an asset if you say, okay, I got a hundred thousand dollars in equity on this house. Let me go ahead and, and do a home equity line of credit or do a cash out refinance. Let me get fifty thousand dollars from here. Let me go out and get a property and flip that property or get rental income from that property. Then I can pay it then I can pay it back. 
you know so it's all about like how you use it if you use it as a liability where it's just sitting there it's a liability but if you use it as a source of investment then it becomes an asset so i'm not fully i don't have a full understanding of what the word equity <coughs> equity mean yep. but just from what you just said i was so it's like you it's almost like you're using it as a um, leverage like is it a loan or something yeah like? e good question equity is so let's say i buy a house for three hundred thousand and i put forty thousand dollars down or sixty thousand dollars down in that house i should have sixty thousand dollars in equity right away now if i pay if i go out a month later and i say i found twenty thousand let me put twenty more thousand dollars on this house now i got eighty thousand dollars in equity equity is just basically how much of my own money do i have toward paying out the house and when i and then when i have it all paid off then it's 100 percent debt free which means it's all equity at that point yes. you see what i'm saying yes. you can actually reuse that equity without you know and, and of course you can still get to live in a house but a lot of people say i don't have any money i got too much debt have you ever thought about the money you borrowing from your house is probably three to four percent, but you're paying fifteen percent in credit card debt. Why not do a cash out refinance or home equity line of credit and borrow that money against the house at three percent and pay off fifteen percent debt? So now you traded bad debt for decent debt. Yeah, I I kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's something, man. You you get it over time, like you know you can't you can't really teach all the principles in a short video, yeah, but as long yeah, as yeah. as long as you all got an understanding that you can do something different, not to get into the weeds, but you can be financially free. You can create enough passive income that's going to replace the income on your job. So working becomes optional, not required. You know, and that's my whole goal. When I say retire early, that's what I mean. How can we make sure that working for you is optional and not mandatory? Yeah, that and that's really what it's all about. It definitely go in mind. Um, you spoke about um, credit. Mm -hmm. The guy name is um, Frank Abagnale. Mm -hmm. He's an ex con artist. You know, they made a movie about him all that. Um, he spoke about the debit card. He said it's the worst financial tool ever. It is. I don't. I don't use a debit card. Well, think about it. When you're using a debit card, you're using cash, right? So it's like if I have a debit card, I'm getting no benefits other than the fact that I'm literally just swiping my card and my cash balance is going down. If you're going to do that, just use a credit card because you use a credit card, at least you get points for it, and then you can pay that card off with your cash. So at least trade the cash and you're building up your credit score. You're building up your credit. There's no benefits to using a debit card. Yeah, basically like you're saying, basically you just using their money, the um, credit bureau money, credit card company money, and essentially still having your money saved. Basically, yeah. you repaying what you already spent with, yeah. which is their money. Yeah. As long as you're responsible with it, you yeah, know what I mean? You don't want to use a credit card for something you plan on paying off right away, or use it for an asset and not a liability. As long as you're doing that and you're responsible and you're paying it off, then your credit score is going up, everything's, you know, you're getting points, you could travel without paying, all of those things are, are building up. But if you feel that, hey, I can't, you know, I can't manage my money, like uh, I get debt and I don't want to pay it off and now I got these high interest cards, maybe until you get disciplined, you hold off on a credit card. What are some benefits of having good credit? Oh man, there's so many. Like you can walk into any kind of lending institution and know that you can get financing. You can walk into any bank and say, "I want to get this property." Boom! Now you got your property earning assets for you. Um, you get lower payments when you buy a car. I mean, it's it's so many benefits. Like I know some people say credit don't matter. That's a lie. Credit credit is king. Credit does matter. Credit absolutely matters, one hundred percent. What are some? I guess and you know, you got you get that much time. But what are some yeah. good tips? As far as building your credit, like as far as paying on time payments. You yep, know. you want to pay on time. You want to you want to use credit and and make sure that you lower your u utilization rate. So, for example, if I have ten thousand dollars utilization, which means that means I got up to ten thousand I can spend on that card. Don't keep a balance on it of six thousand dollars. That'll hurt your score. You want to keep a balance of at least under thirty three percent of that card. So I don't want to have more than three thousand three hundred on a ten thousand dollar card or lower. I would even say twenty percent. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I would say is don't just say, well, I don't want to use this card and call and cancel the card because that actually lowers your credit score as well. You want to keep it open because, again, it's a utilization. So uh, ask for a raise, ask for more money on credit, because the more credit you have, the less it's going to affect your credit when you actually spend it. 
So that's just something else. And there's so many tools about turning your credit into cash and using it for assets. But, but hey, that's that's the main thing. You need to know when you need to pay it before it hits your credit score. You got to understand how the credit, um, how the, the different credit companies report, um, and, and just learn the credit game. Learning the credit game will absolutely change your life. Yeah. Especially with you, like being in real estate, I'll say this: mm -hmm. you No, know, most people they hire somebody to remove the, I guess, the negative. In fact, in, you know, mm -hmm. infractions on that credit, like as far as like they owe debt, they have to remove. They said to purchase a home. Is that really the right way to go versus just paying the debt off? Oh yeah, because I mean, a lot of these people just you know they 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 make it go away at first and then they come right back, mm -hmm. and they don't realize that sometimes they come back worse yeah, so than when it was at first. So. Bankruptcy, and you don't want to look at bankruptcy. You don't look at want to look at chapter seven, chapter eleven, none of that. Just, just get good. Another thing to do if you got a lot of credit cards, there's something called like the debt snowball effect, where you can pay the lowest card off first, and then it snowballs over to the next one, snowballs over to the next one. Or some people like to use a high interest method, where you pay off the highest interest card, interest card first. What it's going to do is going to teach you discipline. Like do it the right way, because it's almost like you know people who. Um, they don't want to eat right. They're not healthy. And they want to keep eating unhealthy. And then they go out and they get surgery. And then all of a sudden their body looks decent for a while, but their mindset ain't right. So they keep wanting to go out and eat right. Like the people who actually create a lifestyle of health, those people are the people who are able to keep it off and they're able to maintain it. Same thing with your car. It's like if you discipline, if you do it the right way, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to feel confident. It's going to change your financial landscape. And, and it's going to make you help you to make better decisions in the long haul. Last question, kind of got lost in the conversation. Yeah. Could you explain the difference between an asset and a liability for those who don't know? Yeah, good question. So a liability is something that's hurting you. Asset is something that can help you. So a liability, for example, is if I go out and I got a credit card and I say, I want to get this 90-inch TV. Um, I'm going to tell you how, how you can turn a, a liability to an asset, too. I'm going to get this 90-inch 90, 90, um, TV. It's going to be huge, right? And I go out and buy it, and now I'm paying on a credit card. That's a liability. That's not helping you make any money. But how can you turn something like that a liability to an asset? Let's say I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy this 90-inch TV. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna host I'm gonna host sporting events in my house. I'm gonna charge people, you know, thirty dollars a piece to come out and see this big screen, and then we're gonna have set it up. Now you didn't turn that asset into a liability. Mm -hmm. So I own a Lam I forgot to mention this. I talked about the Range Rover. I also own a Lamborghini, right? So how can a Lamborghini, they say, that's a, that's a liability, right? No, not necessarily. It could be if I'm just paying for it and just paying on it every month. But what if I rent it out on Turo and they rent it out for like um, $1,500 a day and I end up making thirty grand a month and my, and my note was only like $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Then it turned into an asset instead of a liability. Um, you know, you could do that for any, even with Airbnb, you get a short term rental. If you, if it's just you staying there, it's kind of a liability, but if you rent it out on the short term and people are paying you for it, it's an asset. I just bought me a, a real nice house in Atlanta. I don't even live in Atlanta, but people say, well, why would you buy a house that you're paying $8,000 a month for in Atlanta? That's a liability because I can rent it out for $3,000 a day. I can make $30,000, $40,000 a month off of that and all I got to pay is 8000 and I can still come and stay on there when I want to stay in there so it turned into an asset mm -hmm. you see any liability if you do it the right way you can turn it into an asset you just got to know the game a liability takes away from you an asset adds to you yeah man that's something definitely looking to um, <clears throat> come to a closing here um, I just say shout out to the social media let people know where they can find you at yeah so I'm on Instagram you can find me Marvin Mitchell official Marvin Mitchell Official, I'm constantly dropping tips, dropping hints on financial freedom um, right here in the Lou, St. Louis. Uh, another thing that you could do is you could get my book. I got a book. It's called um, Become Your Own Bank. Mm -hmm. It's an e-book. Walks you through how to become your own bank. Teaches you about the, the debtor saver and the wealth creator. It's $37. That's it. And you can get that book simply by going to becomeyourownbankbook.com. BecomeYourOwnBankBook.com and you can download that and start reading it right away.